partners, uh, gentlemen. I think that uh, we have, as I keep saying, we have had a few sessions on this, and predominantly this is for you know, tips and tricks as to how to get the best out of your whiskey. I mean, it might be understanding the whiskey, understanding the label, or it might be actually doing the tasting. So today we have something which is very, very basics about how to go about the tasting on whiskey. And again, I think so one of the things that we need to actually remember is that we are talking about tips and tricks for beginners. Now, some of these practices might actually be where we are understanding these practices as evolved techniques or probably for beginners. I mean, there are some techniques that probably people employ. Just as a classic example, if someone wants to know, I have observed nowadays that they take a drop of whiskey in the hands and actually rub it in and then they're able to nose. So those are some techniques that we would not be covering. What we are covering today is absolute basics as to what should go into the essentials of tasting whiskey, right? So what I want you to keep in mind is there would be probably different approaches as to how you can go about the whiskey tasting for beginners. But essentially, we are looking at just covering some of the very, very basics. Now, saying that, I'm going to go on to the first element of whiskey tasting, which is, of course, the glassware. Now, again, this is one of the important tips that I think that we need to keep in mind whenever we're talking about whiskey tasting and not whiskey drinking or enjoyment. So there's a big distinction between these two ways as to how you're going to go about whiskey. And there's nothing wrong about, you know, consuming whiskey for enjoyment. I think so at the end of the day, while all of us might taste and all of us might have a lot of descriptors about whiskey, the most essential part about is enjoyment itself. And glassware, has plays a very big role in, in uh, you know both these aspects so i'm just going to start with probably saying that what does glassware essentially do so glassware is something that plays a big role when we're talking about appreciation of whiskey in two aspects one is in terms of being able to nose the whiskey that is, it ensures that if you use proper glassware there is an example on your screen right now there is different types of glassware that is available for actual tasting of whiskey. And that's actually a very nice picture that uh, Sanket and Harsha have put together, where we are talking about right from the basics of a Glencane and probably a Kupita to probably some more fancy and, um, you know, elaborate tasting glassware that is available today right on the you know extreme right which is this glass it's the 1950 blenders glass one of uh, i have one of those with me today and we, we will talk about it but essentially it's a glass with a large bulb now why is this probably an important aspect of tasting of whiskey and how does it really help now if you look at this glass the very shape of this glass should be able to explain some of you know, what I'm going to cover in terms of essentials of glassware. If you look at the area of where the whiskey actually resides, I think so it's ensuring that there is a large surface area which is exposed to air. So if you look at this picture, there is a large amount of whiskey in the glass which is actually exposed to air compared to probably if you're going to use, let's say, a... Um, a tall glass. A tall glass will essentially have a very small surface area and there's a lot of liquid. Even if you look at the other uh, glass on the screen right now, which is an old fashioned, a great glass by itself. And sometimes I do enjoy my whiskey with a, you know, a rock of ice and something like exactly. We're talking about there is a surface area, but there is a let's say a significant amount of volume that is there below the surface area as well whereas in these glasses as you can observe from the picture itself the volume of whiskey below the uh, the volume of whiskey below the surface area is actually pretty low so that's the reason why you know you have probably these glasses that is actually used for nosing and tasting now, 
I've, I've got another glass with me right in front. I hope you guys can see my screen, which is basically a glass which is having, you know, a similar kind of a, um, let's say, shape. And it helps in terms of ensuring that the aromas of the whiskey is actually, you know, coming through to your nose. And that's the essential part about glassware itself. So when we are going to talk about, you know, whiskey tasting and we're not talking about whiskey enjoyment anymore we're talking about whiskey tasting glassware is a very important component of the entire process so our entire appreciation journey of whiskey especially on the tasting will start with the glassware get yourself an appropriate glass now some people probably may say that these glassware is uh, are significantly expensive they actually cause a lot of uh, you, you know probably availability issues and so on and so forth one yes i completely understand and a wine glass works equally well provided you get the right wine glass i think so the most common glass that you will see and this is something that even the master distillers across the globe use is the kopita where you will probably have much lesser you know challenges in terms of getting the uh, glass itself and second you also probably it does not cost that much. So it's not essential that you spend an arm and a leg to get the glass itself. There are glassware options within India. Please look up Amazon. Our club also does sell a, you know, a typical types of glassware. We do that. But essentially what I'm trying to get the message across is it's not necessary that you spend an arm and a leg for getting glass. You can use a glassware to ensure that this you know, functionality is being met. I think so. That's the most essential part of the glassware. Any question uh, about glassware till now? I take that or I'm going to move on to the next glassware. I, I see that Harsha has got, a, you know, a glassware, which is probably better for tasting, which takes the visual out. Sometimes I hear Echoes, uh, him. I'm not sure whether. Yeah, we've, we've, we've muted uh, them. It's, it's another microphone that was uh, causing that. Go ahead, Eman. I'm now, just I'm waiting for any questions. If there are any questions, then I'd uh, like to take them about glassware or elbow. No, please go ahead. All right. So we talked about uh, glassware and the second important aspect that I'd like to cover as a part of, you know, whiskey tasting is serving and airing of the whiskey. Now, probably this um, aspect is one of the aspects that's not concentrated upon or probably not paid attention to that very much every single time. But it does play a significant role in your appreciation, especially if your whiskey is one of those whiskeys which takes a long time to open up. Some of the very old whiskeys or aged whiskeys, this is the usual tendency. So it's very, very important that you understand the serving and airing whiskey as an aspect before any kind of whiskey tasting. Now, what do you mean by serving and airing of the whiskey? Now, first, which is the most important part of serving is the volume. It is extremely important that you keep the volumetrics in mind when you're actually serving in one of these glasses that we spoke about. It's essential that to get the maximum out of the whiskey in the glass, the volume of whiskey that you actually pour has to be, I wouldn't say consistent, but has to be ensuring that the surface area, like what I was talking about, is at the maximum level. That's the first thing that you need to keep in mind. If you're going to just, for example, if you're going to pour a lot more whiskey into this glass to the extent where you're actually hitting the nose, what you're doing is actually killing the very essence of using such a glassware because there's so much more whiskey within the glass that does not have an opportunity to interact with the air. So that's probably something that all of you need to keep in mind when you're actually pouring the whiskey into glassware such as this very very essential that the volumetric usually go with around 10 ml 15 ml or probably a 20 ml pour depending upon the glass that you're using but that is what would be the recommended volume when you're actually pouring it into a glass such as this 
Now, what is airing and why do I have a stopwatch of around 10 minutes put around this? Now, airing of whiskey is basically allowing that whiskey to actually interact with the air. Now, you can imagine if there's a new bottle that you have opened for the evening or for the occasion of tasting, the whiskey probably has been in the bottle for a significant period of time. So if the whiskey is in there in the bottle for a significant period of time, then we are going to probably not have it interact with the air for a long time. So just imagine this bottle. So if this bottle has, if you look at the shape of the bottle, again, there is a neck which is very, very narrow. And when we're talking about a neck which is narrow, there is again very, very little interaction, little or absolutely no interaction with the air that is happening. And it is very, very essential that for getting the best out of the aromatics of the whiskey, you need to ensure that there is exposure to air. Now, the ideal time that I would say is a very, let's say, it varies from whiskey to whiskey. But if you are spending time to understand the whiskey in terms of appreciation, in terms of the nose and the palate and things like that, I think so it is essential that you let it at least breathe in the glass for around five to eight minutes. Ten minutes would be ideal. But if you don't have that kind of patience, then I would probably say that go with at least, you know, around five to eight minutes. Please trust me on this one. I mean, while uh, it might sound like a practice that is not uh, well established as is not talked about very much. I think so practically having done a number of sessions for different brands and number of whiskey tasting sessions, we see a big difference in the way that the whiskey appeals to people when it has been aired in the glass for more than, you know, around 10, 15 minutes compared to something that I pour fresh off the bottle and then allow for tasting. So again, the important aspect one, First is glassware. Please keep that in mind when you're actually doing whiskey tasting. Second is, of course, your serving and airing of the whiskey. Keep the whiskeys served in the glass for around 10 minutes. Use a lid to ensure that it does not, you know, probably you lose too much of alcohol. If the whiskey is probably a little delicate whiskey, it's going to be probably taking some time. You may lose alcohol as well. So anything will do, a, you know, watch glass will absolutely do. Keep something even as a uh, you know piece of paper to cover uh, the glass that works. But when I say that you know you can use a piece of paper, make sure that the smell of paper or cardboard is something that you need to be very very careful about. So the let's say recommended practice would be to use a glass lid. But in case that you don't get your hands on it, then I, I'm just giving you saying that for effectiveness you can use any other element. But that's pretty much about you know serving and airing of the whiskey. And again, as a practice, if there's any questions, I'd like to take them up before we move on to the next aspect. I think Arijit had a question. Hemant, he's put his hand up. Arijit here. So what general rule I am following that the uh, every year in the cask, every minute in the glass. So what do you think about that? So for example, if you have a 12-year-old whiskey, you should... Uh, uh, left the whiskey for 12 minutes? Uh, I think so. That would be a great way to actually put, let's say, a barometer onto that kind of a measurement. But then I really, really struggle to probably, you know, wait for around 20, 25 minutes if I'm drinking a probably older whiskey. So that one aspect, I guess, one we need to be uh, careful about. or I don't know about careful or not, but then it may have a different ratio or rigid. But that's a great practice. I mean, 12-year-old whiskey, if you're going to let it breathe for around 12 minutes, I think so it yeah. works very well. But one thing probably that comes to my mind as I respond to you is now, Let's talk about the influence for a minute about the terroir and let's talk about Indian whiskies itself. Now, if you talk about an Indian whiskey which is around five years, six years. True, true, if you're true. Both... No, I'm talking about the scotch only. I know that Indian whiskey's uh, maturation is so fast, so we cannot follow the, this rule for the Indian whiskey. Yeah. So may yeah. maybe with a little bit of a modification to that rule in terms yeah. of, you know, probably doubling the age that is spent in the cask and things like that. But I think so. It's a great practice. So, you know, one minute for every year that is spent in the cask works very well, especially in Scotch whiskeys. Yeah. yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. All right. Most welcome. Anyone else? Anyone else? Yes, Simon. 
Uh, how about adding a few dash of water, drops of water? So, uh, we will come to the, you know, adding of water and tasting and nose, etc. But what I'm probably going through is the sequence as to how you're going to go about, okay. uh, you know, appreciation of whiskey. So, adding of water probably will start once you finish. My way of doing it to ensure that you get the benefit from both sides is that you start the tasting without the adding water. And then you go on to probably an adding of water and then closing and actually tasting it. Explore. Okay. Yeah. So Thank that you. that I think so we get the benefit of you know, being able to nose and taste without a few drops of water, and then with a few drops of water as well. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Most welcome. I see another hand go up. Uh, Rohit, please, please uh, tell us about your question. Okay, so uh, hi, good evening, gentlemen. Uh, so I wanted to know a bit about uh, nosing. How do you identify? How do you differentiate between, uh, you know, a space tight single malt whiskey and a high high side, or be it uh, you know uh, a highland and a lowland? What is the? Uh, how do you identify the uh, notes? The nasal notes uh, for these whiskey. Right, great question, Rohit. And I think so. That's something that you know, a lot of us in India are actually probably the marketing is in such a way, or the probably communications with the brands in such a way is that they're expecting once anyone gets into probably whiskey with a little bit of seriousness for you to be able to recognize this. Let me tell you, Rohit, saying that you know to recognize the, the regions today especially on the nose or on the palate is an extremely difficult exercise because you know the distinction what whiskies used to have prior to probably the modern era of whiskies where production actually does not get influenced largely by the terroir to that an extent because of the raw materials being aggregated the way that the production cycles have changed it's a very very diff difficult thing to do so first, I probably want to start by saying that, you know, don't go, try to look for it in that direction, saying that I should be able to identify the regions that probably will come with some practice, some amount of experience, etc. That will some, and that is something that will happen. But my recommendation would be try to recognize the actual notes or the actual flavors of the whiskey. That probably is a more appropriate approach in today's world to be able to identify the whiskey or the style of the whiskey rather than the regionality. Because what used to be probably a very regional kind of a profile is now no longer, you know, existent. An Islay whiskey, probably you'll be able to identify much more easier when you get those very peaty and very smoky notes. That's something probably relatively easier to recognize compared to a difference between a space side and a highland. There are there some... Are some but I still but think, I think that, you know, that, you know those, those differences, differences are, are pretty, let's say, difficult to identify for lack of a better word. So, Rohit, did I answer your question? Yes, yeah, yeah, sir, you, you did. did. Uh, in fact, uh, I am a whiskey enthusiast and I have tried uh, many of the uh, top notch brands of single malt whiskeys that are possibly available. Great oh, to hear, Rohit, and uh, yeah. really um, uh, appreciate uh, that feedback. But I think so. The essential part, what I'm trying to cover is, let's keep let's it very keep basic. It very basic. And I think so. Yeah, that's, that's the, the most important most. element, because what's really going to happen is that when we are trying to, you know, probably shoot for the stars, we might uh, trip over ourselves. And again, repeating myself, I think so. This session is largely to cover the basics. All right. So if there are no more questions, I'm going to go about the nose and saying that what is the basics about the nose? How are we going to go about this and how we'll probably approach? All right. I think so. There are some very attractive uh, looking pictures over here. And this for every beginner who's, you know, or probably even an enthusiast, a seasoned enthusiast, and we have a significant number of them on the call today, as I can glance my, you know, eye across the people who have joined us and thank you all for joining the session today. I think the essential part about nosing is something that 
you know is a very enjoyable experience but it also is very intimidating to a lot of us why is it intimidating why is it so you know scary for everyone is i think so because of the reputation and when we look at the marketing videos and when we see see what let's say brand ambassadors or people who are in this journey for a long time do it sort of and it was very intimidating for me as well when i started my journey within whiskey not that i have made uh, uh, big strides within that but i think that the comparatively when i used to look at nosing when i started my whiskey journey to what how i probably approach it today i think so the approach has changed in the mind and it is not on the nose or how i go about whiskey tasting one thing that we need to remember is please do not try to look for notes because the moment you are trying so hard you are not smelling anymore that for me i think so is the most important element of nosing whiskey do not try to look for it because the more effort or the more stress that you are going to put on yourself trying to be able to identify notes two things are going to happen one is the moment and this is something that we see very very common in when we are doing a whiskey tasting session and you people may have observed it as well the moment you read something or someone says about that nose or about that flavor within the whiskey that's when immediately you identify till then you not have identified that very note or that very taste but immediately as soon as someone says that you identify with that nose and with that profile immediately so that's something that i would say avoid or rather you know probably keep an open mind to it because the moment that that essence of being able to try to taste or try to nose a whiskey happens you lose out on a significant bit so relax and ensure that you go about nosing exactly the same way that you would go about nosing anything else such as a perfume or things like that go about it in that manner i think so it helps you understand the nose a lot better so what are the basics about it i think so one thing which is most essential is give it a little bit of swirl now we said that let the whiskey sit in the glass for some time to ensure that it airs and interacts with the air in the glass the swirl ensures that the molecules of the liquid actually are disturbed thereby probably encouraging a little bit of you know evaporation so when that evaporation happens those evaporated elements of alcohol carry all those flavor notes up into the glass and thereby when you swirl and when you bring it to your nose there are more of these aromatics actually coming through the glass so that's the logic of actually swirling it a little now one thing that i have seen that happens very very frequently when we are talking about whiskey being swirled in the glass is i think so the concept of swirling largely came from wine and when you do swirl wine you do swirl it a number of times to ensure that there is that kind of disturbance to the molecules and encouraging that kind of evaporation what i would actually say about this practice is now that's very very related to wine it is not related to whiskey for the simple reason is we are talking about when you are uh, you know swirling wine in a glass we are talking about an abv of around 5 to 7% or maybe in some cases 9% but when we are talking about whiskey we are talking about anything starting from 40% upwards to probably 65 68 or maybe in some case 69% as well which are heavy cask strength whiskies so how does it make a difference the moment the alcohol is so significantly higher you already have a lot of alcohol being evaporated when it's sitting in the glass being exposed to air so if you are going to keep swirling the glass like how you are used to when we are doing let's say wine is probably going to lose a lot more alcohol and it encourages that you know evaporation of alcohol and you may actually get a alcoholic burn what really happens when you do an alcoholic burn if you take a very deep breath and that very stingy you know uh, feeling in your nasal cavity that happens because of alcoholic burn there's another concept called alcohol anesthesia that happens if you are going to let it exposed to too much of you know alcohol rather than actually smelling the notes so again long thing short i think so what i'm trying to get across is don't swirl too much when you're talking about whiskey just give it a little bit of a swirl to ensure that you get the best notes of the whiskey right 
So the next aspect about is put your nose into it. I think so that statement is a little, let's say, going on one side of the extreme. It depends upon from person to person. Again, the capability of sight, smell, hearing is very varied from person to person. So that's the reason why you also need to recognize what your capability is and your capability might be far more sensitive to what mine is for or for the person sitting next to you enjoying the very same whiskey is women are touted to have a much better you know uh, sense of smell and probably not without a reason they do have a very solid reason behind it which we'll go into probably in more advanced sessions but essentially what we're trying to say is that everyone's capability of smelling is going to be very different so the distance from the glass is something very very relative you will need to get comfortable with the glass I think so. Again, I'm going to go back to that very aspect of you understanding that tasting of whiskey is very, very individualistic. You'll need to know as to what your comfort is, is on the palate. You'll need to know what the comfort of how much of volume of water that you need to add. All of that. It's very, very relative to you. So the first aspect about any kind of appreciation of whiskey is to ensure that you understand that comfort with the liquid. Now, I like to actually nose my whiskey depending upon the kind of whiskey that we're using. I start off from a distance and I gradually go closer to it the moment I don't get those notes. So if something is probably very um, easy for you to pick up when you're at a distance, I think so that's your comfort level. And that probably also helps with the problem of avoiding that alcoholic burn. And remember everyone, I think so the other aspect that I'd like to share with you is that alcoholic burn, when you actually smell, I've heard a lot of people, especially people who are starting their journey in whiskey, tell me saying that, how do you get all those notes? I mean, when I smell whiskey, I smell nothing but alcohol. I smell nothing but spirit. And that's not a phenomena that probably is very rare or that is coming only to you as a beginner. It happens to almost everyone when they start the whiskey journey. You are likely to get that alcoholic burn. You are likely to smell only spirit when you're actually nosing the whiskey. But the essential part is to ensure that how do we ensure that you get comfortable, comfortable with the liquid to the extent where you're going to be able to start smelling these notes and go beyond that alcoholic burn. So it comes with a period of time. It comes with your comfort and it again comes with you know, practices as to as to what is the kind of distance that you have with the glass, what kind of glass that you're using, what is the kind of whiskey that you're using, so many different elements to it. But again, I'm going to probably say this throughout the session today that when you're talking about appreciation of whiskey, get comfortable. Don't try to pressure yourself in identifying what the experts talk about. Experts get it wrong all the time. There might have been a number of instances, do Google this, where experts, so-called experts, have been put into a room and given blind tasting and blind nosing, both in wine and in whiskey, and they've got it completely wrong in terms of you know what was actually served. I think so a $10 whiskey or a $12 whiskey outscored any of the you know big weights in terms of the brand that you see there. So definitely not something that you know you can put onto the table and say that all right this person is able to identify every single whiskey that's poured onto the glass i think so that's a very very difficult thing to do right so the next aspect about nosing one is the comfort level in terms of the distance from the glass saying that you know how deep are you going to go into the glass some people like to actually put their nose right into the glass so that you get the maximum amount of it but as i said do it in degrees, in incremental degrees to ensure that you get the best out of it. But, you know, I think so once the whiskey is settled down in the glass and once you probably given it adequate time, putting your nose into the glass and taking a nice, you know, breath from that whiskey can probably be one of the most enjoyable experiences in terms of whiskey tasting. Because the very journey itself, I mean, if you're going to, you know, probably spend more amount of time more amount of effort trying to identify the notes rather than enjoying the experience i think so we are losing the plot somewhere so it's very essential that you enjoy the entire experience more than anything else like i am doing right now 
Well then, so breathing in uh, the notes, I think so that's the next element after you, you know, get the distance right in terms of how comfortable you are with the liquid. I think so one thing that has helped me in terms of ensuring that there is, you know, probably adequate time for you to smell is that you take when you take those deep breaths or when you take those breaths within the glass, I think so you should pace that breath. Try to go about it a little slowly to ensure that you're breathing in very, very slowly, absorbing it inside your cavities. And then probably those layers will start revealing themselves. And it's very essential. A deep breath can be taken, you know, that I spent probably one second or maybe half a second in taking that deep breath. Or you take a longer time when you are actually nosing. So that probably is the other element that I would recommend to some people. Smaller volumes of air being sucked in through the nose to ensure that there is a little bit of more time that you are giving the air and the vapors to actually come through the nasal cavity. So that's something that I'd probably say in terms of breathing in the nose. Last but not least, which is the most essential part about nosing is no one gets it right the very first time or very few people may get it right. When we're talking about bigness, I think so it's essential that you do it two, three times to ensure that you get maximum. And some whiskeys, especially older vintage whiskeys, have different layers. So some of the initial layers, once they're through, you'll start getting different notes. So it's not that you're tasting different whiskeys or nosing different whiskeys. The same whiskey may actually give you very, very different notes depending upon the time that it spends in the glass and how much time that you are allowing with it. I think so I must call out over here is as a character, Indian whiskeys, I think so change significantly with exposure to air. So what you're going to smell at the first or maybe fifth minute when you start nosing compared to the eighth, ninth minute may be relatively different. So repeat it multiple times. And this, I think so, would be where I would say that, you know, once you do it in this manner, probably you can look at exploring it with another manner of adding a drop of water. Now, as I said, I think so the general practice that I follow is to ensure that you get a great opportunity of being able to taste the whiskey with water and without water. The way to do it very, very easily would be do a little bit of nose, do a little bit of, uh, you know, tasting without water and then go back to water. And then comes the question of what is the, you know, volumetric of water, which I'll cover in when we're going to do the palette. But before I move on to the next section, as usual, any questions, please let me know. Let me know. I have to take them. Go for it, Vinod. See your hands. Uh, hands. Uh, see, uh, as you said, the glassware is important and the way you know it also. Uh, mm -hmm. But fundamentally, when you hold the glass, uh, I guess the way you hold the glass is also important, right? Because the body heat, uh, you know, like uh, uh, might change the, uh, you know, the character of the uh, liquor in the sense of good luck. What's your thought on this? An important An point, important. you know, and thanks for bringing that up. I think so. What I'd probably I'd have to say about, you um, know, I'm just going to mute you because I think so the mic is giving a reflective note. So we'll like, I'll uh, let you speak once I finish what I have to say about it, if there are any thoughts on that. But now I, I do remember if I recollect the person who probably explains it almost immaculately on the screen when we're talking about whiskey tasting is probably Charlie McLean. And when Charlie McLean speaks about whiskey and the, his narration, the way that he describes, you know, the appreciation journey, absolutely wonderful. And he talks about the concept of, you know, warming the glass by holding it within your palms and ensuring that the body heat gets transferred onto it, right? very very enjoyable experience you know when you're watching him do that but you know i i will have to say the saying that you know there is a lot of you know uh, aspect about when we're talking about where is the actual tasting happening now if like what it 
happens within uh, Scotland or a colder region, it makes a lot of sense. Obviously, the whiskey is cold in the glass, so you need to you know transfer that you know body heat onto the glass and ensure that. So again, what is it en encouraging? I mean, scientifically, and uh, Harsha has uh, given me a heads up saying that we we have an absolute legend on the call today. We have. Uh, Surinder and I'll, uh, you know, uh, come back to Surinder's viewpoint on a lot of these aspects that an amateur like me is taking people through is that the essential about, you know, transferring any kind of heat onto the liquid is to ensure, again, evaporation happens because the moment the whiskey heats up a little, the molecules of alcohol start, you know, floating higher. So that's essentially what you want to do when you want to get the best out of whiskey in terms of nosing and tasting, right? So in India, I don't know if it's, if it's going to be very, very relevant. And it depends, again, upon the kind of glassware that you're using. So if you're using stemmed glassware, it really doesn't make sense of holding the glassware you know, up on the bowl, which is essentially what you're saying. You know. But probably in Scotland, it makes a lot of difference. In India, I would probably recommend look at your comfort. I mean, if you think that the whiskey is too cold for you, then probably it might work. But otherwise, generally in India, especially in summers, we're talking about 30 or 35 degrees. So I wouldn't really recommend in terms of heating the whiskey further than what we are already having. Right. But th that's my take about it. You know, then anyone on the call, if you have a different opinion or if you believe so differently, please feel free to share your thoughts because very clearly, as I keep acknowledging, this is not a session for experts. This is a session for beginners like myself. But Thank Vinod, you, Manjit. But so, so, Vinod, see, I think that's a very relevant question. Um, see, sometimes if you, you would have seen people uh, rolling up their glasses around the arms like this. Um, and sometimes even in wines, people do that. Right. So we might have to understand, especially Western Europe and an upwards northwestern of uh, Europe and also uh, Scotland. Um, you know, it, it's like sunshine is there like for a few weeks in a year. Uh, it's pretty cold. So, you know, you, you need to understand the, the, the environment, um, uh, which where they are coming from. Second, uh, for us, uh, whiskey drinking or whiskey tasting could be like, for example, uh, a rare occasion. So people uh, living in these region, see, for example, if you look at people in at least Western Europe, they drink a lot of wine almost every day. And people in UK, uh, nowadays more people drink whiskeys, but it's it's like if you look at uh, 20, 30 years ago, they drink a lot of whiskeys, just a simple one. It could be a Bell's, it could be a famous Gros, but but they drink. So, so it's basically a, a, a simple, easy, regular go-to drink on a daily basis or on a very high frequent basis. So, um, so when you want to cherish something very simple, easy, uh, you, you just want to ensure that it's warmed enough and, and, and kind of a little bit of uh, that, that warmth that brings a bit of taste to the, to the whole whiskey. It's not that it will change the flavor a lot. No, you're not taking a 60 year old whiskey in your palms and rolling it and trying to warm it up. It's only those bells and famous draws and those kind of simple whiskeys that they, they tend to drink a lot and they try to uh, do it. If you look at like Charles McLean, right? Um, that what Hammond rightly put it uh, in one of the, even when there was like hundreds of whiskeys around. So we said, OK, um, um, dear, please pick a whiskey. And I, I picked one whiskey. He said, let me pick a whiskey. And he picked a Highland Park 12 year old. And and then he was like saying, oh, I would I could drink this the whole of my life. Right. So it's basically those are the whiskeys, a simple whiskey, which they can relish and, and, and kind of thing. So they bringing the body heat or the, the heat in the palm is is, is is works well for them right so it, it doesn't it doesn't you know affect the taste or quality of whiskey in any way yep thank you Damudu. thanks Damu. Uh, again uh, uh, very very important that all of you pitch in because as i said this is not i'm hoping that it does not become a you know a session where i'm the only one speaking and you guys are all enjoying yourself with a nice dram you know without coming on the camera and sharing the good thoughts but then i'll still go about this exercise of mine moving on to palette 
So I think so. Again, one of those areas where we're going to talk about when we're talking about palette, it's going to be um, from a very beginner's perspective. And every time that I'm going to go through this exercise, I will probably try to be partial towards the people who are starting the journey within whiskey and whiskey appreciation because I think that this for me is a very intimidating subject when you look at it from the outside while some of us may have spent a significant period of time within you know the appreciation journey this session is largely to encourage people who have started this journey and probably what they look at it as and trust me like knows it's never going to be possible that someone actually takes the you know glass uh, you know, list down all the uh, notes that you see that are listed on the bottle, on the notes of the bottle, etc. It doesn't happen. Nor does it happen that, you know, someone walks into a room and picks up a glass of whiskey out of 10 whiskeys and starts tasting and tell you what the whiskey is. It doesn't happen that way. It appears like that when we're talking to brand ambassadors or to experts. But it is not like that. And if you actually speak to a real expert, which we will probably do on the call itself, and Damo himself is probably someone who's exposed to a varied number of whiskeys. But I think so. The essential part is the palate also is something that you develop. It starts getting sensitive. It starts recognizing over a period of time. What you usually taste when you actually start the whiskey appreciation journey is nothing but spirit. So don't look for anything beyond that. When you actually start tasting uh, whiskey, it will feel very much like whiskey itself. You will randomly get, you know, some probably taste that you'll be able to recognize, like some of the notes on the nose that you'd be able to recognize. Some of them are probably a little more vocal. And when I say vocal, let's say, for example, you're tasting or you're nosing an Isla whiskey, such as an Adbeck, like what I have right now probably easier to recognize a little bit of smoke a little bit of you know peat within that whiskey easy you know profiles let's start over there don't try to you know um, over engineer the thought in your head of trying to be able to taste something which you have read on the label or someone told you start educating yourself by the small sips that you take in on the palate to ensure that you are going to be able to learn about these nuances now, what are the tricks of, you know, actually tasting? And this is the pro uh, part that probably all of us enjoy a lot. And uh, I'll take that sip to ensure that, you know, we start this journey. I think so the first tip that you're seeing out there is saying that take a small sip. Small is a very functional word over here. Now, small, not so small that you are not even, you know, probably wetting your tongue or your mouth. All right. It has to be at least the volume that is of a mouthful and mouthful not that you know you're expanding your mouth to accommodate a big gulp just to ensure that there is liquid all around your mouth i think so that's what the small sip is uh, that we're talking about it has to be where every part of your mouth is exposed to the liquid it starts getting warmed up and probably you're going to get some exposure with the liquid actually falling at different parts of your tongue. Now, you might have seen uh, many pictures about the sensories on the tongue. There are different sensories on the tongue. And depending upon what stage of, you know, sensories that you are at, or rather, you know, the front of the tongue can taste something, the back of the tongue can taste something. I'm not going to go into the science of that right now. Again, as I said, it's largely for bigness, but different tastes come from different stages of the tongue. So that's something that you need to remember. Take a small sip. Let it coat your palate. I think so. That's the other thing. I said, what do you mean by this? What do you mean by coating the palate? What really happens? There's nothing very scientific or any uh, technical thing about it. It is probably just ensuring that the, you roll the, you know, whiskey, like although you're probably not to the extent of gargling, I suppose, but to the extent where you're ensuring that it touches all aspects of your mouth. That's pretty much what you're saying when you say that, let it coat your palate. So I'm going to, you know, uh, indulge in a little bit of experimentation itself by, in the session saying that let's take a small sip and let it coat your palate. I like to say, let's chew the whiskey, Hemant. Wow. So 
chewing the whiskey harsha thanks i mean that's also an aspect but what what i'll uh, say about this is when you're starting you know the tasting of the whiskey after the nose you enjoyed the session with the nose you got something out of the nose that you really enjoy or probably recognize and then you move on to actually you know uh, tasting the whiskey the one aspect about after taking the small sip and letting it coat is take the volume that your palate is comfortable with and i think so a lot of beginners especially when you're drinking whiskey with high strength and if you're not added any water there's a lot of discomfort because there's a lot of burning sensation that's happening and i'm often asked saying that all right how do i keep it in i mean you guys saying the chew the whiskey let air pass through the whiskey there are so many techniques that you people tell us but it's actually so harsh i can't really keep it on the palate the simple thing to do there essentially when you you know going about tasting is add a few drops of water again if you know there are different viewpoints as to how much of water to be added into the whiskey some people say that you know just a couple of drops would work very well some people you know are more generous in the helping of whiskey some people actually go to the extent of saying that you know if a whiskey is at around 50% or you know 45% bring it down to around 30% 27% which is you know technically it out to be the most comfortable abv to get the maximum on in terms of your palate again very very individual opinions and the way that they are comfortable with the whiskey probably you may not be so if it is burning your palate add a little water to ensure that the burn comes down and you are actually able to taste because at the end of it when we're talking about appreciation all these tips are supposed to give that very basic of letting you taste and if you're not going to be able to taste because of the very burn of alcohol there's no point in doing it so be very very simple about these techniques because there is no rocket science behind it there is no expertise that someone is actually able to do something and get maximum out of whiskey it doesn't work that way so be very very simple about it look past any initial alcohol burn i should have read that statement i guess before i went across the sand journey but that's exactly what we are talking about ensure that your palate gets comfortable and is able to taste over a period of time you will not get the results in your first 10 15 20 whiskies over a period of time this is developed and probably uh, harsha if surender is there i'd really uh, like to say hi to surender and take an opinion from him because one thing that in today's world is happening is everyone is a master blender everyone is a distiller everyone you know fancies that they are going to be able to do that but let me tell you that having a little bit of exposure over the years with uh, gents such as surender uh, gents uh, from other distilleries as well it is no easy task of sitting in a blending room and going through around 20 30, 30 different whiskies in afternoon when the sun is blazing so surender if you are there on call i'd really like to call upon you to understand saying that or rather you know recommend to us people who are beginning this journey saying that as to how do you guys do it i mean going through around 20 30 whiskies and getting the blend right it can't really be an easy job surender are you there and if you're there probably you'll need to unmute yourself we can't unmute you sir and then you'll have to do it yourself yeah we are unable to unmute you uh, you probably need to unmute yourself but uh, well if he's unable to speak we'll probably come back to him as and when you are available surrender to speak do let us know harsha probably uh, i am to surrender might help in case that he's having any technical challenges but essentially gentlemen what i'm trying to probably get the message across again in terms of actually the palate is get accustomed to it add water to ensure that you are comfortable with the whiskey and you are able to taste and that initial alcoholic burn is something that everyone probably experiences so you're not probably alone in that area you will probably take some time before one you know other trick that probably i'd recommend and this is overlooked multiple times when we're talking about you know whiskey tasting as such Uh, i see my screen suddenly uh, lighting up but i'll uh, 
probably ignore that at the moment. But I hope you are able to see my presentation still now. No, no. Uh, Hemant, uh, start sh sharing your presentation again, please. I think uh, Surinder, my mistake is uh, hit that button. Okay, no worries. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, uh, what what I'd have to say about you know the the trick of uh, palate tasting is the warm up. The warm up lap is you know something that's very very essential when you're actually tasting whiskey. And when I say the warm up lap, I think so when you are tasting probably a little more expensive, a little more exclusive whiskey. What I recommend, and I think that it works for a number of people who have told me saying that it actually works very well, is get a whiskey that you are more familiar with to warm up your palate. So if something that you drink on an everyday basis or on a regular basis, you identify that whiskey very well. I mean, you're comfortable with it. Your sensories actually recognize that, you know, taste and smell very well. So when you do that warm up lap to that whiskey, what really happens is, all your sensories are probably more active. They are able to recognize a little bit more uh, familiar tastes and smells. And then when you expose it to an unrecognized whiskey, they probably are able to absorb better. That's my theory. And I've seen that it is working in practice very well for me. You're using a warm up, you know, whiskey. But again, Ensure that you don't use a very strong and flavorful whiskey for a warm up. And if you're using a delicate whiskey after that, that probably it may interfere. But ideally, if something that you are very familiar with, I would really recommend that you start with a warm up whiskey before you actually do your tasting. That works very well. And then finally comes the note the distinct flavors. There are a lot of pictures put over here in terms of the spice, in terms of the saltiness, the citrus, bitterness, and sweets, and spices, and probably there's so many tastes that one can recognize, and more so on the nose, there are so many flavors that you'll be able to recognize. But remember the taste and smell, something to do with the sensories on your nasal cavity and your tongue and your palate, but there's also a lot associated with memory. So once you actually smell something, there are a lot of things that are happening beyond just the actual, you know, smell coming in. We are talking about a very, very simple practice of having an issue or rather being able to recognize these flavors and tastes. So just be comfortable with it in terms of when you're starting to taste, how you are going to be able to decipher. So if you actually taste something, write it down or actually annotate it to ensure that you don't lose that note. And there's nothing wrong in you tasting something which probably others are not talking about. The other thing that all of you need to remember is if you're tasting something, please ensure that you say it and you don't need to hesitate. If you're tasting something, it is your palate, what you are familiar with, you understand. It. So don't you know probably hesitate, especially in whiskey tasting sessions and when you're going into probably, you know, a uh, party where people are more familiar with single malt whiskies, that's when I see that a lot of people hesitate. Don't do that. And so the very, very important aspect about you starting your whiskey journey is you being comfortable with how your recognition is. So again, one of those things that you need to get comfortable with yourself, saying that, yes, I can taste this, I can smell this and say it out. So yeah. Uh, is Surinder able to speak now? And if he is, then I'd really like to call upon him because... Hi, Heaven. Hi, Asha. How are you? Hi, Damo. Oh, very nice. Nice to see you after a long, long time. Hello, sir. Really, nice really, to see you. Yeah, long time, no see. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, you have been, yeah. Damo has been missing me. I have been missing him. You know? <laughs> we should we catch up We are chasing each other, yeah. but, uh, but without results. <laughs> yeah, I know. We, should, we should catch up sometime soon, sir. Good, 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 good. So tell me, Surinder, I just wanted to, since you're there on the call and for people who don't know who Surinder is, I think so you have not started your whiskey appreciation journey. I think so. Let me start from there, especially if you're in India and if you have heard, uh, haven't heard about Surinder, you probably have not read too much about the Indian whiskey journey. Surinder is the master distiller and the blender for now 
uh, Piccadilly, from which Indri comes. He works as a, a consultant there. He consults with the brand to ensure that he structures the whiskey, which has bought, you know, again, numerous awards in various, you, you know, international whiskey competitions but before piccadilly the uh, i think so the one thing that i will uh, no one will miss about surrender is he was the master blender and distiller for amrit and amrit fusion which everyone knows about the world's third best whiskey which was just in the year 2000 1997 i think so was you know engineered by uh surinder ji so surinder i think so largely the question that i have or rather i'd probably like to get some tips from you for the audience someone who's beginning their whiskey journey and when they're talking about palate and tasting right it's always very intimidating at least it was for me because when people you know knows the whiskey and say oh i can smell you know a wild orchid out here i can smell a garden there's so many notes coming out of here and i used to sit and wonder saying that i i can smell nothing but spirit in this glass so <laughs> i think so that's a very very uh, let's say scary place to be saying that maybe the, you are not able to do it maybe this is not meant for you how do you go about this because taste and smell is something very very difficult to i think so train yourself on and when you do it so many times in a day how do you do it see it, it, it's it's generally if 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 a if a person is thinking on those terms that i'm trying to smell a glass of whiskey and i'm not getting anything that is the first lesson i'm telling you that is the first lesson that you are ready to learn so obviously even for even for very experts also it's 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 not easy it's not easy and uh, you know to to pinpoint the specific uh, flavor profile uh, in your notes it, it most of the time is it, it it happens that you 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 have tasted you want to express that particular note but you know you know that i i know that i know that i'm smelling something but i'm not able to pinpoint that you know it's it's happening with 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 with, with the experts also there's nothing wrong and uh, for the general public i would say that you know you should never as you rightly say, said and mentioned before uh, one should not be shy of uh, of expressing the whiskey in the glass in front of you maybe it's wrong doesn't matter anybody anybody who expresses his whiskey in his own uh, uh, style and experience you know it's it's not wrong maybe he is not very close to uh, to to an expert's uh, view on the on the profile but but it is subjective so there's nothing wrong that that i can say that no your tasting notes are not right and mine tasting notes are right so there's nothing good or bad or right or wrong it's it's something that you perceive a a a a, a, a sip of a, a dram in a particular way you express it in a in a particular way you like it you experience it that's the way that that is the best uh, uh, way to express your whiskey so first of all it should not be normally people say that if i open a mouth and start you know expressing in front of friends you know so i may be you know so, so sort of making a a, a a small thing out of me but uh, one should never think like that you should express and that's how you 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 train and more and more you train and and put the whiskey in your you know palate and uh, do it exactly you have you have explained exactly the in 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 a in a hand holding manner you know right from uh, nosing it tasting it how much of volume to be done whether to hold it in a in a in a in a hand or or on with a stem all that beautiful things these these are these are really basic things for anybody to know and start the whiskey journey you know i feel you are on the right path absolutely i'm very happy that you are conduct in fact i was i i i i came from office i am in indri right now acha very so nice. i was alone so i thought i enjoyed i just opened the cupboard i saw the legable in 16 i said oh this is the right way to to enjoy uh, uh, i i mean uh, gentlemen uh, is there any better experience that we can have saying that having a drink with surender though it is virtual he is giving us absolute you know pinpointing uh, uh, pieces of advice that don't be scared about this yes, absolutely 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 there's nothing enjoying. wrong there's nothing right love your whiskey the way you 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 want to you you want to enjoy it absolutely there's no hard and fast rule but uh, only thing is have the taste for good things you know that's 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 one thing 
and probably the 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 the, big, the beginners will start uh, uh, loving whiskies once they are exposed more and more brands and 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 then they see and as you rightly said the the one wonderful thing i i, I liked about it when you when a beginner tastes the whiskey you know even for for us also you know you take any any whiskey or rum in your glass you know you, you just just have different sips at different times or a period of time you know every sip tells a different story every sip tells a different story and it's 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 the time that you spend with the dram you know and it's the it's the it's the ambience that you you have it while you are enjoying your dram it's the company that you are enjoying it's the atmosphere that you that you enjoy with everything contributes to the i tell you honestly everything contributes to 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 the experience of uh, enjoying a whiskey dram uh, in, in a in a in a in a balanced you know environment basically as far as people are there as far as climate is there the the surroundings are there the ambience is there and the good friends the stories you know all 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 that makes it wonderful experience so that's how it's one must enjoy really whiskey is to enjoy whiskey is to make fun whiskey is to tell stories and uh, it's all, it's all about sharing you know that's how how i would put it thank you thank you very much surender i think so those uh, absolute gems of uh, advice i think so one thing that you guys must actually you know pick up from what surender just said is that it is the stories is the enjoyment that is more important the more that you are going to make it a practice or you force yourself saying that no i need to become a w set 3 certified person who's going to be able to sit in front which of which has become a fashion these days no yeah Th that's probably yes you might want to make a career out of it and i'll come to some of the other people on the call i see satyakam i see sharad and of course we have damu also these are all people who have got probably a repertoire of ensuring that they express themselves very well about the whiskies and things like that yes 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 i know you know you know what's the reason what is the best reason for such guys you know like uh, damu satyakam and all of you you know is, is that you you spend your hard earned money on buying the liquor you will definitely know how how to taste it you will definitely know how to enjoy it you definitely know how to how to experience the the tasting you know how to enjoy it with with yourself even if you are alone you know but but if you have spent your own money you know if it's a bo bottle given as a gift you may you may say okay that's fine yeah it's okay but uh, the, the 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 bottle that you have, you have purchased with your own hard earned money is going to tell a different story i tell you absolutely so satyakam do you want to share something with us with regard to your tips and tricks about you know tasting i really like to hear from you or sharad any one of you to you know share your thoughts about uh, tasting sahib is most eloquent so he will share sahib is always eloquent satyakam i'd probably uh, you know put you onto the spot now and you know show us the mood dikhai mood dikhai ke liye paisa dena hai yaar show us the face yaar we want to meet <laughs> especially when uh, surender ji is having a lagavulin at indri uh, can you not uh, come on screen and uh, you know tell us your trips and tricks about you 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 have seen you have seen the place hanuman hey hanuman It's a it's a wonderful place. But now it's getting dark. Otherwise, I would have I would have taken you a stroll. You know, uh, no, no, this is the place. Absolutely Lovely wonderful. atmosphere to enjoy a good whiskey. You know. Hi, Sir Tom. Yeah, we can so, see you now. So I, I think he had trouble um, unmuting himself, so he is. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, loud, even loud I had part. even I had the problem of unmuting. I don't know, really. He's he's coming, joining back in. Oh, there he is. But he is still. No, no. at the top you you uh, unmute at the top okay rejoin satyakam we, we will still save the spot for you don't worry your uh, mo moment of sharing your thoughts will come back I i'll just proceed uh, for for the time being we'll go on to the finish and we'll let satyakam come back damu do you damu, have any do you have anything i thought that you wanted to say something yeah so one thing, one thing so typically when i do some tastings yesterday i had a testing with some of the big bosses some of these are yamasaki and hibiki collectors and mckellen collectors right so the first thing i told them is uh, before you open your mouth open your mind when you're tasting a whiskey just go with an open mind 
uh, don't think that oh this is a hibiki 21 or a 30 it has to be spectacular and it's like a 2000 tasting notes that's gonna pop up in my palate um so initially they were all stunned they were saying oh no i you know what um you know um people said that this yamasaki has a very grassy note that's why i i wanted to try so i said i don't know maybe every time i open um, a whiskey and pour a dram i go with an open mind um and and i also told them that in fact i actually have it uh, i usually write it down even a bottle that i opened let's say three months ago even two days ago when i revisit you you Sorry, sorry, you went on sorry, mute. Dami, you'll, you'll have to unmute yourself. Okay, sorry, okay, sorry. sorry. Um, uh, so, so, um, so uh, I was trying to say that when I when I tell people and even myself, before you open your mouth and drink the whiskey, uh, I tell them, open your mind first. Go with an open mind. Uh, don't think that somebody is telling you that this is a Yamasaki is going to taste like this and then do it. Just go with an open mind. Um, second thing that I was trying to tell you was, uh, you know, um people like Surinder, i was very fortunate to 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 meet such people in life um so i've not noticed that like people tend to uh, try the same drams or they revisit uh, it's 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 just that the dram also evolves but it's just that whenever you interact with the dram in a for example in a solitude maybe you're going for a trip or maybe you got some three more bottles so you want to finish one of them in one sitting so you drink 10 rounds of it so every time you visit the drum you you taste something different your mood your your ambience ambience is one thing that we we discuss a lot um, and surinder is very light someone is very happy someone is very sober and i'm telling you a lagavulin taste uh, more fun or more even much more funnier in, in in the situations so i think don't go with a fixed rule that i'm going to expect some chocolate taste in this or things like that so that's that's my first suggestion second whatever you feel i'll, I'll tell you uh, maybe i won't eat up uh, heman's time maybe another half a minute um so so i'll tell you what happened once i i was invited to uh, an artberg tasting event and there was an artberg single cask right um and there were a lot of people who came in uh, just to taste the dartbuck single cask now after we tasted uh, you know the uh, the marketing head went around each table and the mic was passed on to let the audience express themselves you know a um, few people said this is a spectacular drum that they ever tried they feel it like a French Pinot Noir, and somebody says it's got a bit of smokiness. So the it's a New Zealand Pinot Noir. So when it came to me, I I tasted and I said this is a very uh, I expected a lot from this dram, but I think it's a little bit bitter for me. And and like I was like probably the twentieth person in the room who spoke about it. Uh, so the nineteen other people who spoke before me. Uh, looked at me like, who is this guy? Who, who who brought him in? What is he talking about? This is this should be good, right? This is an artbook single cast. It's a thousand pound bottle, and 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 the guy uh, who was hosting it's okay. Everybody has their opinion. Let's move on. So it, it went to the twenty first person, twenty second person, and and the and and what happened in the twenty first person is, he said, look, I'm 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 just trying such a whiskey for the first time, and I thought everybody said it was nice, and I was sulking because i felt it was a bit probably not as good as i thought it would be it was a little bit bitter maybe when this gentleman told i also want to say what i want to say and he said it's got a bit of that sappiness and all that stuff so my, my point is don't get intimidated by what people say it is uh, just say what you feel you know and and be true to yourself like don't try to cheat yourself for example somebody had a coconut rhythm in one of their restaurants yesterday People thought that it was nobody thought that it was resume in the first place. They were all saying, "Oh, this is this one, that one." Finally, I said, "You know, let's ask the guy what it is." Uh, it sounds like a soup. This this guy says, "Oh, it's just resume." So we have this habit of adding one spoon of coconut milk into it. So a lot of our guests ask for it. So this we call it as coconut resume. You know, so it's 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 like that. So just just uh, uh, be true to yourself. What do you feel? just go with it and and just don't get intimidated or don't try to follow a pattern uh, a, a predetermined notion when you approach a whiskey just have fun that's that's all i would say
Hemant, your mic is mute. Hemant. So I unmuted myself. Thank you, Vinod. Then uh, I, I see, I still see Satikam looking absolutely devastated, saying that man, I can't get the you, you know mute button off. And uh, sorry, Satikam, we'll try to figure this one out. So no, he's he's time. he's he's a bit devastated because Surinderji said he's buying a lot of bottles. So uh, <laughs> Satikam buys only casks these days, you know. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, graduated from uh, buying, uh, you know, bottles to cask. But we'll sort this out. And Satyakam, I can't believe that this is happening to you again because I, I remember, uh, I, I think so, three, four years back when we started adding people as group experts and administrators. We actually tried that with Satyakam, and I tried everything possible on Facebook on the group to add him as a group expert and administrator, and it just wasn't happening. So, Satyakam, clearly there's something going wrong with your elements out there in terms of things. But uh, on the next yes, he has lost the elements in the whiskey. Yeah, yeah, everything going into the whiskey <laughs> only. <laughs> but uh, any question? I see that Vinod still has got a hand uh, put up. Yes, seven. Please, uh, Vinod. please. Uh, nice to meet you, Surinderji, and all experts. Uh, I have a fundamental question. Uh, uh, nose and palate is very complex thing. Okay, typically I'm drinking with uh, scotch from last 25 years. Okay, seeing lot many reviews and all. Now Europeans have a different kind of food they eat and they have a different uh, notes, you know, of uh, like uh, nose as well as palate. Where in India, we have a different kind of food and, you know, uh, especially for palate. Now keeping uh, like when you nose it or when you test it, I'm not talking about enjoyment part or, you know, I'm talking about purely testing. Now, that time, how can you create a, a database of so many complex things in your mind? Because you weren't able to, uh, you know, like ready, get any ready-made data or something like that. You, you need to keep everything in your mind and you need to recall it every time you sip it. So can you just uh, uh, share some inputs or suggestions on this? Of course. Uh, so if I got the question right, I think so the question is largely around saying that when you're actually tasting, there are so many flavors, there are so many notes that one needs to, you know, think about. How does one associate as to what should come through? Is that largely right? Yes, precisely. Thank okay. you. Okay. So Again, I'll probably start from the very basics uh, without saying that when you're actually trying to do this, like what probably Dhammu said, what uh, you know, Surinder also echoed saying that you're already putting pressure on yourself because you're trying to say that, okay, there are thousand tasting notes or thousand flavor profiles and I need to recognize every single one of them. Very, very difficult to do. Don't put so much of pressure on yourself. And probably I touched upon this when we were talking about nose and palate. All of this is highly complex. And the complexity evolves beyond actually the capability to taste and to smell. These sensories have actually got a lot to do with memory as well. So when you actually taste and smell, there is a trigger in your mind and no one needs to train you or tell you about this. Your mind will work its way through it as long as you don't put this pressure on yourself or being able to identify that. The moment you smell and taste, you automatically will recollect an instance, a occasion or the time that you actually smelt or tasted something similar. That's where the memory link happens. And that's a natural phenomena. The more that you're going to put pressure on yourself saying that I need to be able to understand the roasted chocolates or roasted almonds in the drink, very, very difficult thing to do. Go it the other way around, Vinod. Smell. And then if the smell automatically tells you about roasted almonds, that's when you recollect, okay, roasted almonds was like this and that's when. But now what you're trying to do, at least what I understood from the question is, you say that, okay, I need to smell roasted almonds in this drink and you're trying to identify roasted almonds or some kind of notes. That's not the way to go about it. Spin it the other way around, exactly 180 degrees. Smell the whiskey, taste the whiskey. If you're able to taste dark chocolate, that's what dark chocolate is for you. So 
don't try to associate uh, while we are talking about ai ml and saying that being able to recognize machines are going to take over our jobs and well as tasting or making whiskey very very difficult thing to do it's very very difficult for you to remember thousand tasting you know uh, you know, varieties of palate and for nose very very difficult for even the ardent experts to do it's about yeah. how your memory responds saying that okay when i smell this i smell wet wood so i didn't look saying that i'm going to smell wet wood in this and then recognize the tasting note i smelt it and i said that you know wet wood is what is uh, you know i'm reminded of so very simple you know i'm just trying to you know not be very complex about my answers because again as i keep saying this session is for beginners and for us to enjoy ourselves and when you're talking about talking about the more important part is you recognizing it more than you trying to identify it thank you srimanth ji most welcome yeah. maybe we know that i'll add a point here see uh, one thing is like this um i also uh, had questions like exactly the same way that you asked uh, so this gentleman is you know, like train yourself right so that could be a first step for you to kind of get in there right of course you know heman might find a bit of okiness i might find a bit of vanilla surinder might find another 20000 plus notes in it so it depends on the experience and exposure right but i think you can still try to train your palate maybe before whiskey maybe let's say for example you drink coffee try drinking a little bit of black coffee take a sip see what's the difference between an african coffee and indian coffee uh, and things like that it's not you're becoming an expert in that but you're trying to train your palate and trying to see oh what is it the notes that i'm getting that that could be a first step for you to uh, to try to see what you are you are getting into you know thank you damo i can i can i can add a add a couple of things you know it can you can yeah, as you damo said correctly you can you can to some extent train your palate you know for a beginner and uh, it can start with a with a very very common daily using things you know in the kitchen you know you you try to try to spy you know try to smell the spices try to smell the you know different fruits vegetables you know and then you know mainly the spices you know the different kinds of uh, flavors that em that emanate out of it when you, when you when you put it in the oil when you put it in the curry you know that that's that's that, that's the way you know you can you can you add an ingredient and see what happens start start perceiving those 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 notes in in, in the in the smell and that's how you can probably uh, you know add that uh, bit of bit of uh, sort of uh, sharpness to your to your elements of uh, senses that's that's that that's that's very fine thank you surender ji yes yes all right in the interest of time as we usually do that we you know talk a lot when we are enjoying our whiskies and clearly today it's the occasion to enjoy and but i'll quickly move on to another aspect of whiskey tasting which is you know essentially known as the finish saying that what does it really have i have a very nice gent over here who clearly looks uh, probably him enjoying the whiskey and for some reason i have the graph out there harsha do you want to explain as to present, what present you present your present your screen oh i am not presenting my screen sorry <laughs> it's just just saying uh, short medium and long that's all I'm, that's that's what it is <laughs> that, that's the significance of short medium and long of the uh, <laughs> person being able to understand. now i i think so what today that you have uh, understood uh, at least you may have registered as a part of this entire session is essentially we are all talking about the tasting being very very individual driven and the way that you know the whiskey appears on your palate may not appear on the same for everyone and that i guess goes the same thing when we are talking about um, you know the finish as well finish is also one of those aspect that would probably reflect different with different people but finish is the nothing but the phenomena of the whiskey actually retaining on your palate as to how much of those elements actually are retained when you actually finish sipping 
how much of the time that the experience lies within your let's say back of your throat etc i think so that is what is known essentially as the finish so that lingering taste that you get that lingering flavors that remain in your mouth that fresh breath the experience sometimes that you know you actually have i think so that is something what we are talking about the finish so what i would probably say about finish is saying that you need to be able to again be very patient with it see as to how it settles on your palate i think so that is again very very essential as a part of the whiskey tasting so i'm just generally going to go through the entire session that we had today saying that what are the elements i see all of you some of you at least are starting to drop off we already spent an hour and a half here but essentially glassware very important for you to you know start your whiskey tasting or appreciation journey choose the right glassware for drinking and for tasting second is we talked about let the whiskey air so pour the whiskey at least 5 to 10 minutes let it settle in your glass to ensure that it gets the maximum in terms of exposure to air that's the second element thing that ensure that you give that the third element was of course a nose saying that how you will be able to appreciate it what are the different ways and different styles that you should be able to nose the whiskey fourth we spoke about is the palate saying that how to ensure that the whiskey is rolled around in on your palate touch is very all the very parts of your mouth the tongue should experience it on different segments to ensure that we get it and last of course is the finish that we spoke about all through and through i think so you heard it absolutely from the guruji himself saying surender saying that don't put too much of pressure make sure that the appreciation is as a part of your enjoyment journey and that's when your mind opens up to ensure damu gave a very nice anecdote about you know tasting an ad bag and be very very truthful to yourself all these basic elements i think so will take you very very far in terms of being able to identify one last tip that i'll give about you know when you're in the beginner's journey now we say it's very easy for me to say that okay when uh, there are people like surender damu satyakam and sharath and all those you know great folks in the room when we say that don't uh, feel pressurized is very easy for me to say very difficult to do let's face it as a practical problem and the one trick that i did to ensure that i got out of that mode is i tried tasting alone so when you are at comfort with your own self right you don't have the pressure of all these people all the environment surroundings are not there so you start getting a little more comfortable with your glass with the whiskey all of that happens more naturally so these are the tips that i thought would be very very helpful for anyone who's beginning the whiskey journey some of these tips have helped me significantly in my whiskey journey and if there are any questions i'd like to take them and any thoughts please do share we also have a number of uh, sessions that we have done over the last few days so this is uh, probably the penultimate session that we had with regard to um, you know uh, sessions for beginners we did classification and basics and all of that we're going to put the presentations that we actually went through during these sessions on our social media handles and our website as well for you people to refer to if it has been of any help we did go through the production of whiskey in terms of malting fermentation distillation maturation bottling all of that we did a very interesting session on whiskey labels it was good fun reading the label and identifying what the label had today of course we are enjoying the whiskey itself and we have one last session which we have planned for the 30th of june which is basically whiskey in india i think so while everyone can talk about the sala whiskies i think so one thing that we need to be conscious about is what's available to us and i think that familiarizing ourselves with in terms of what good things are around us is very essential so we'll talk about some of the brands over there we'll talk about availability of these whiskies gurgaon probably will uh, reflect very well over there and then the different communities that are available and it is not necessary that all of you need to be part of only smac any community that is going to probably help you in your appreciation journey please do join this is not a competition that we are in that we are trying to compete against each other it's about helping you come across your appreciation journey with that any questions or if not then i think that we are already having a great time Abhil, Hatsha, uh, 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 hemant hemant 
I feel you need to dwell a little bit more on the finish because finish becomes a very very important part of the of the of the calibration of the whiskey. You know, we, I mean, we'll finish you finish is, in this. what makes what what makes finish long, short, or you know, medium. So that's very important. Number one. And it's it's only the 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 profile or the pleasure of the whiskey uh, that 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 is retained on the palate for the length of the time. You know, more the length, it's 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 considered to be a better uh, a whiskey in terms of uh, uh, you know medium or short short medium or long finish. Now what is happening is basically. The finish uh, uh, is 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 a matter of uh, how the whiskey is basically distilled in the in the primary stages of the distillation, and how how it is being matured and what style of maturation has been followed there. So that brings in a in a in a uh, in a way uh, a little bit of elements of fatty esters or the oils basically in the in the in the whiskey. Now, if the oils are there, the fatty esters are there, so you tend to have a longer finish for those whiskies. You have those lactones, vanillas, uh, sweetish elements. You know, all 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 the all the all the sugars that 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 are coated, uh, that are coating your your palate for a longer time, describes the finish. Okay, so I feel that is that is what they must also know. The people in general must know that what is that it makes. Uh, a, a finish of a whiskey, shorter, longer, or medium, you know, something like that. So it is the it is the amount of the oils. It is the uh, it is the way the 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 portal design is there. You know, if the line arm is drooping, you'll have more of oily uh, things. If the line arm is ascending, you know, in the in the distillation uh, uh, equipment, uh, the probably you'll have a you'll have you you won't have that great uh, you know. Uh, 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 finish maybe a lighter floral whiskey, while as the line arm going into the into the condenser will will probably have more of oils, you know, and that will probably result into probably it's not it's not sure, but then it probably may may lead to more of uh, uh, oils getting into the into the whiskey and thereby increasing the length of the uh, you know the finish, so that's how it is. Thank you, Surinder, for adding that very important element about finish and, you know, uh, ensuring that I don't really ignore it. But yes, I think so. Some of the uh, aspects that you covered, very, very important in terms of, I think so, the reason why, apart from nose and palate, finish is an integral part of every tasting is because of the weight yeah. it carries. I think so, the length, like uh, Surinder rightly said, in terms of the measurement matrix, if you actually put it saying that what really is a good finish, a longer finish is generally considered to be a good finish in terms of the whiskey. And yeah, of course, he did give us some, uh, let's say, scientific analysis as well in terms of how the distillation actually plays a role in the actual finish of the whiskey, saying that how the pot stills are designed, etc. Again, something that probably if you're a beginner, you may find it a little difficult to comprehend. But I think so more and more that you're going to read about the subject, more and more that you're going to uh, learn about the subject, you'll probably get understand what Surinder is talking about. But just to give you a very, very simple understanding of what Surinder just said in terms of, you know, the line arm of the distillation, etc. Think about it like this. Now, line arm is that, you know, copper pipe that we're talking about moving in from the cops, uh, pot still. So if the line arm is upwards, so basically what uh, we're talking about is when you're boiling something and when the line arm is upwards, so basically the fumes or whatever is getting distilled needs to move up. So against gravity. So all the heavy elements usually tend to fall back down. So the fatty acids, etc., all of them, it's very difficult for it to go through the other side because it's upward and it's very difficult for them to traverse. Whereas when it is downward, once it reaches the point where it is touching the curve, all it needs to do is flow through. So there are more chances of those fatty acids and everything actually coming back into the liquid when you're actually transferring it. So when that happens, those fatty acids, those lactones that Surinder was talking about are present more in volume in your you know, whiskey compared to the ones that are produced with the line arm being up compared to being down. 
So that reflects in the actual end whiskey stage in terms of the finish. So again, I think so while we can probably dwell the entire night into enjoyment and, you know, the scientific terms that we whiskey geeks absolutely love, we can go through nights and nights of these conversations. What's most important for you is to understand the measurement, which Surinder very, very aptly, you know, I think so captured saying that it is the length of time that you actually retain the experience of the whiskey on your palate. The more amount of time it is retained on your palate, the more better the whiskey is considered in terms of the length of the finish. So that's probably what I'll probably end with. And again, I hope that you people enjoyed yourself today. I really enjoyed myself, especially with expert advice from different people coming in and really giving us some absolute gems. I really look forward to all of you joining us on the 30th of June. I think that um, uh, Indian whiskey brands has got a lot to offer today. You know, there are a number of times that I've been interviewed by different, you know, media houses. I think so every time I have reflected multiple times that gone are the days where Indian whiskey was probably what it was five, 10 years ago, or probably even 15. I think so Indian whiskeys consistently perform different production houses perform significantly better than, you know, counterparts coming from different parts of the world. So do join us for the next session. Surender ji, I hope you enjoyed the Lago Lin. In, in Thank you. Day. Thank you. Thank really you. It was, it was wonderful, really. And yeah. I really enjoyed it, to tell you honestly. I really enjoyed it, you know. Thank you. Thank Discussing you. and seeing you all and, and enjoying a, a, a sip sideways. So nice, nice for the evening. Perfect. Thank Good. you, everyone. I really Thank look you. forward to Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Bye.